A few days ago, I made this video about Adobe's new Photoshop beta, in particular, the generative fill tool, which I said in that video would be revolutionary for the photography industry. Photography, as we knew it, changed that night, and I still stand by that. This is going to be a game changer for the photography industry. I still don't know what to make of it. I know a lot of people out there are still confused by it. And the past couple of days, the photography industry has been awash with people discussing this. Some photographers very scared about what this means, some very excited. I, I still don't know where I sit. I've had a few days to play with it now and it still is just blowing my mind with the possibilities and just the technology and what it can now do. It is crazy. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you four ways in which you can use the new generative fill tool to make your wedding photographs look epic and really make huge differences to them. Whether it's right that we do this or whether it's wrong, I'm going to put aside for the sake of this video because I'm still not sure where I sit in this, but I want to show you what this tool is capable of. And please stick around to the end of the video because I do try to do something which does not work and it fails in quite a funny way. So please stick around to the end. But anyway, let's get on with the video and open up Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and I'm gonna start with what I think will be one of the most commonly used uses of the new generative fill tool, and that is how we can expand the canvas to make it really, really big and let Photoshop decide what should go into that new expanded area. So let's start by clicking over here. We're just gonna just increase the size of this canvas. We can actually go really big just for the sake of this video. What I'm now going to do is use the select tool to go around this part of the photograph, then this button here to invert that selection. Now we click on generative fill and generate. As I mentioned in the first video, and if you haven't watched that video, please do go back and watch that one because that's more like an introduction to this tool. But all the processing is done in the cloud. So it takes a little bit of time, which is what we just have to wait for here. For the sake of this video, I'm going to cut this bit out for the future examples. And there we are. And again, this is still, still blowing my mind at just how accurate that is. You cannot see the join. It's amazing. And it also gives you three versions so you can play around. We've got that one, this one, and this one. Probably going to choose the middle one, I think. And again, if we go in, it is seamless. It's absolutely crazy. So again, that's what we started with and that's what we ended up with. And let's try this one now. Now this is gonna be really interesting because when I tested this, I think Photoshop will do it again. Photoshop created a whole new reality for this photograph. Let's see what it does this time. Again, same thing, I'm gonna select this area, invert, generative fill and generate. I really wish that Adobe had chosen another name rather than Generative Fill. Every time I say it, I've got to try and think. It's always like a struggle. It's probably the worst name for something so good ever. I mean, look at that. This, as I mentioned in the first video, this isn't photography anymore. This is digital art. And there's, not really, there's no skill in what I'm doing here. This is just Adobe giving me random images to use as part of its AI. But it is crazy crazy again the moral questions about this are a complete different discussion what i want to do in this video is just show you what it is capable of and the crazy thing is if i wanted to i could generate three more images that this could turn into and they will be very very different it's it's just fun to play around okay look at that one wow oh it's 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 still, I still don't really know what to say. Okay, let's try this one now. I love this photograph. This is a real moment in between the portraits, which is often a really good time to, to keep make sure you keep your camera up and keep on shooting because you never know what you can get. And I, I actually prefer this real moment to the pose version of this photograph. And as you can see, I shot this at a very, very wide aperture. That's why we have so much blurred here. And I was just curious as to what Photoshop would do. Would it make the further areas in the here even more blurred? And yes, it does. It looks amazing to me that. That is absolutely perfect. 
and and I can't I can't deny it. I, I love this. I love that version. Again, if we go in, can you see the join? I certainly can't. It's it's crazy, crazy good. And it's it's not that it's just expanding the area. It is carrying on what a lens would do. There's what we started with, and there's what we end with. It's amazing. And it doesn't have to be just portraits either that we can expand. Obviously, we can expand anything. So let's try this photograph. This is a group photograph that I took on my drone. And you would think this would be trickier to expand. Let's see what Photoshop can do. There we go. I mean, I don't I don't know what to say. I, I just don't know what to say anymore. It's ridiculously good. Again, let's go in and look for the join. I just can't, I mean, what you can see there, and this is this is something to be aware of, actually, that at the moment, I'm sure this will change in the future, at the moment, the original photograph looks much sharper. That is because what Adobe is replacing it with is quite low res. So that's something to be aware of. So when you, jo when you go in very close on this version, we can see the difference. But I'm sure in the future, that will be rectified. Remember, this is only the Photoshop beta version. So it's not even the full version yet but it's just given us such a good taste of what is to come. Okay, so the second reason which we can use the generative fill tool to make our photographs look epic is to add things. So I'm going to show you here how we can add things that did not exist to this photograph to make it look really striking. Now I must say, this is something that doesn't sit very well with me. I'm not very comfortable with doing this, but I just want to show you what it is capable of. So I've just selected this area here. I'm now going to type in add flying silhouette veil now i should just say the hardest thing of this whole process is spelling the word silhouette i can't do it i always get it wrong so i had to go to google to copy and paste that word in that's about as hard as it, this whole process gets there we go so here's a couple of different versions now uh, I, I just i don't like this as much but what i want to do is just show you how accurate it is see how the clouds even continue behind that veil so it looks very, very realistic, scarily realistic. Okay, let's move on to this silhouette photograph now. Again, this is, this is just for fun. I would not do this, but let's select an area here and let's type in, copy and paste the word silhouette again because I do not know how to spell it, dog. There we go. Crazy, crazy. We could even, if we wanted to, let's have jumping dog and there we go wow oh i still don't know what to say but look at that look at that one i think my favorite is probably this one but i love them all let's just go in there we go what is this and whilst we're on the theme of animals let's select this area here and let's just write add duck <sighs> no words unbelievable it's not just the fact that it's added a realistic looking duck it's the way that it's so out of focus in line with how this area is out of focus as well it makes it look so realistic i defy anyone to have known that that wasn't real this is what's crazy as well adobe has launched this ready this is the beta but it is so accurate it's not like they've launched something and we're laughing at it it's already really accurate i i just can't get my head around it now, the third way in which we can use this tool to improve our images is by removing things. And I think this is going to be the really big game changer for many photographers, because this is something that we already want to do, but have struggled with, with the limitations of what Photoshop can do for us. But now it's completely different. So for example, I love this photograph and I've tried in the past to get rid of these signs on the door and I've really struggled to the point where I couldn't do it basically. So you would have to be extremely skilled in Photoshop to manage this, which and it was I wasn't good enough. But now with the new Photoshop beta, let's see what happens. That is amazing. It's not quite there because we shouldn't have this line here, but I think I can take it from there. So let's flatten this. Let's use this tool just to go over here. And maybe just clean up this area as well. 
Yeah, it's looking so much better already. There we go. That would have been impossible a few days ago. But now, I mean, who knows what reality is anymore? Let's just remind us ourselves of where we started. There. Look at that. And that took seconds. The sad thing about this is that would have been someone's job, a retoucher's job to do that. It would have been too hard for me. So I would have considered outsourcing this to a professional editor. I don't need to do that anymore. I can do it myself in seconds. Crazy. Now, I did include this image on the previous video, but I don't think I'll ever get bored of getting rid of Toastmasters from photographs. <laughs> Sorry to any Toastmasters out there. I love you, really. The thing to bear in mind when I'm doing this is this is not me making a really accurate selection. I'm just going round on a trackpad. But yet, that's all we need to do to get this result. Broken record time again. I... Ugh unbelievable look at that one look at that i oh there's, there's a slight imperfection but whoa now before we get on to the fourth version this is like a little bonus thing here that i just couldn't resist putting in this is a photograph that i love from sanja and ricky's wedding and i actually love here that sanja's looking down however what we can now do Again, whether you want to do this or not is, is completely a different question. But just to show you what is possible, if I now just go around Sanji's eyes and type in open eyes, you can guess what's coming. <laughs> I apologize, Sanja. That is not the most flattering. Neither is that one. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> Let's just regenerate this one. There we go, though. That one is looking much better, as is eh, not so much. Not that one. That one, though, again, I don't think it's the most flattering, but it's just to show you another way that you can use this tool. Right, so with this photograph, I'm going to show you how I think that a lot of photographers will really want to use this tool, and that is to make what is already a really nice photograph really epic by reason four, adding reflections. This is what I think people are going to love to do and why a lot of people are going to get very excited about this tool. So first of all, let's drag out this canvas and make it really big. I've got to go really, really big. We're going to select the central area like this. We're then going to click invert, generate fill and generate. This is a way that you can make your images look really, really wow. Now notice that I'm using the word images because I don't believe this is photography anymore. This is digital art making, but it is something that I think a lot of people are going to like to use to create something that is just unbelievable. I mean, it's done it there in one go. That's just crazy. What I was expecting it to do is something more like this. I'm now going to make another selection. Oh. And just put in make reflection. The thing is, this is now so simple. You do need, obviously, a good base photograph. You can't just take any old photograph and make it look like this. But once you've got that good base image, you can really take it to different places. And there's no doubt about it, people's portfolios are now going to go up very, very quickly. Now, notice, actually, it's not done the best job here because the reflection is too overexposed. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to type in make under exposed warm reflection that's getting better okay if i just bring down some of the highlights yeah i mean that's i think i mean if you go in you could be really picky and say the reflection yeah it's not great we could actually improve that but the key thing is how quickly here we have gone from that photograph to this image now, at the beginning of the video, I said that I found a limitation with Photoshop Beta Generative Tool, and it was with this. I mean, this is a big ask, to be fair. And again, we are talking about a program that is still in beta. But what I was trying to do was remove people from a group photograph, such as this one. So let's try again. Maybe I'll get it better this time. I'm going to select this person, then click Generative Fill and Generate. There we go. It's done a very, very good job. Let's now choose this person. I'm going to just add that area as well. And these flowers to the selection. Okay. Generative fill and generate. 
Ooh, it's not bad. It's getting there. I mean, it's, it's obviously errors, but we could we could clean this up. I mean, that is still very, very accurate. What I'm now going to do is get rid of this bridesmaid. That must be surely, surely impossible. There she is. Generative fill. Generate. <laughs> I love it. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and on that bombshell. Yeah, let's just remember, this is Photoshop's beta version of this. It, it will get better in time. But I just thought, yeah, don't worry just yet, photographers. Wedding photographers don't have nightmares just yet because I don't think many of our couples will be happy with this sort of photograph. But who knows? So it isn't perfect, thankfully, yet. <laughs> So there we go, four ways which you can use the new Photoshop beta generative fill tool, what a mouthful, to make your photographs look epic or your images look better is probably more accurate. Please, please, again, let me know what you think. This is the hottest topic in the photography industry right now. Everybody's talking about it and I'd love to know what you think about all this technology. Does it excite you or does it scare you? I'm very much in the middle. I can see it from both sides. Part of this does really excite me the removal tools are amazing the way that we can clean up images now is something that is really really useful i also don't mind expanding an image as well slightly i don't want it to go too far into something that just looks completely fake but when it comes to adding things that's where i really really struggle but i do certainly stand by the comment that i made in my first video in which i said not only will this be a game changer for the industry but this will change photography overnight i still believe that it has we are now in a new version of what reality means. Can we even trust what we see anymore in photographs? We'll, we're going to learn to dispute everything that we see. And even if something is real, we're going to doubt that it is. It means that photographers who are producing really good work people will just doubt that it's even real anymore, which is such a shame. It's a crazy, crazy time. And I'd love to know what you think. So again, please do let me know in the comments your take on this, because this is the hottest topic in the photography industry right now. So yeah, please do let me know what you think. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much again for watching, and I will see you next time.